Welcome to Getting Ready. My name is Liesl and I'm one of the nurses at Natural Beginning Birth Center. We do this class to prepare you for your labor, your birth, and your recovery with us at the birth center. And I'll be going over that blue folder that you most likely received from one of your midwives in your prenatal visit. You're most likely in your third trimester. You probably finished your childbirth education classes and you may be hiring a doula and all those things are great. It's really important that you fill out all of these consents and all of the paperwork before your next prenatal visit and give them to your midwife. Until these are turned in, you're not eligible for a birth with us because we need everything ready for you and your baby. The first consent is for Pitocin administration. We give you this option to receive a small dose of Pitocin to prevent excessive bleeding um, after your birth. Most of our moms recover without any issue, but we give you this option because it's an evidence-based way to prevent extra bleeding after your baby is born. Next is a consent for you to take your placenta home after your baby is born. You will need to bring in a cooler if you would like your placenta, and you also need to release this to us through your disposition of placenta paperwork. In addition to the other consent, if you would like to take your placenta home with you, we do have another piece of paper for you to sign given to us by the state of Texas that just says that you would like to take your placenta home and that you acknowledge the risks and the benefits of that. Next are consents for the treatment of your baby. We can administer something called erythromycin, which is an eye ointment that can prevent eye infections in your newborn baby. We can also administer a small dose of vitamin K, that's an injection in their thigh, that prevents bleeding in the newborn as they are not born with vitamin K in their bodies. A side note, if you would like your boy circumcised, it is mandatory that he receives the injection of vitamin K after birth. Next is the newborn metabolic screen. This is something that we'll do at your 24 hour home visit. You can accept or decline this. It's a small heel poke to your baby and we draw some blood and put it on a card that is sent to the state of Texas. And they can screen for over 200 different metabolic disorders after your baby is born. And you can accept or decline this as well. We do not offer the hepatitis B vaccine at Natural Beginning Birth Center, but your pediatrician can give it at your first appointment. And we just want you to acknowledge that you're aware that we don't offer this vaccination at the birth center. Next is a consent for us to rescreen you for hepatitis B and syphilis at your baby's birth. Next is a consent for us to perform the newborn hearing screen. Texas law mandates that every newborn will have access to hearing screening. And you can consent to this newborn hearing screen, including sharing information with the Texas Early Hearing Detection and Intervention if your baby has suspected hearing loss. Also at your three-day visit, we'll do something called the critical congenital heart disease screening test. All we do is place a little sensor and we check their blood oxygenation levels. If those levels are concerning, then we follow up with your pediatrician. To promote access to midwifery care in the United States, Natural Beginning participates in the collection of statistics from our births, and we submit this to the Perinatal Data Registry, which is through the American Association of Birth Centers, and they take all of this data and put it together and use it to promote out-of-hospital birth and show that it's safe and has good outcomes. We don't use any identifying information, and we do ask your permission to submit this data from your birth to support birth centers and midwifery care. And your last consent with us is for for nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas. And we do have some handouts in this blue folder that goes over how nitrous oxide works in labor, the risks, the benefits, and please ask your midwife if we are offering nitrous oxide at the time of your birth. Next on this form is information about your pediatrician that's very helpful to us. We really appreciate if you could write down the name of your pediatrician or the group that they're a part of, their phone number and their fax number. And then lastly, at the end of this section, you'll find questions about your birth and your birth goals, your fears, if you have a doula, why you chose a birth center, and what your expectations of birth are like. And this is great when you hand this into your midwife, you can go over these things. You can also include your birth plan if you'd like. It's really important that you fill this section out. And then there's also behind it, something called Texas Imitrac. And Texas Imitrac is something that our state offers where you can accept or decline for your baby's vaccination records to be submitted to the state. And you might be wondering why this can be helpful and why they would offer that. And this is because it can be submitted to your child's school or if they go to the emergency department, they can pull up those records instantly and check what vaccinations they've received. On the birth certificate worksheet, just some side notes. 
You will notice that it will ask where your baby was born, the day that your baby was born, and the name of your baby. And it's okay if you don't have those figured out yet because we don't know when your baby's going to be born. But fill out as much as possible. If you and your partner are not legally married, please let your midwife know at your next visit because there's a little bit of extra paperwork that we need to do before the delivery of your baby. A gentle reminder that you only call the midwife phone number if you're past 37 weeks. If you're before 37 weeks gestation, you should call the OB-GYN North phone number as you are not eligible for a birth center delivery prior to 37 weeks. That midwife phone number goes to an answering service called MedConnect where they will take down some basic information and then the midwife will call you back at your phone number within about 15 minutes. If 15 minutes goes by and you still have not heard back from the midwife, please call the ob North phone number and that will go to the physician who's on call. It is very important that you do not arrive at the birth center prior to calling the midwife. Unlike the hospital, someone is not at the birth center 24 hours, seven days a week. So it's really important that we know that you're heading into the birth center so that we can be ready for you. Next, you'll see a handout on natural ways to encourage labor and birth. And please let your midwife know if you're starting any of these natural ways to encourage labor. And just as a side note, we don't want anyone taking evening primrose oil. This used to be a popular way to start labor, but studies do show that it can cause your bag of water to break prematurely. And just a side note, make sure that the car seat base is docked in your car and ready to go. So before you go home, your nurse will go over each of these points with you, but it's really helpful if you can review them ahead of time just to have them fresh in your mind, especially if you're up all night long in labor and you're exhausted. It's nice to already have them in the back of your head. We all want you to have a successful birth at the birth center, but sometimes a transfer to the hospital is what's safest. And so we do give you a handout that goes over what that might look like if we do transfer you to the hospital. One of our jobs as midwives and nurses is to recognize when labor and birth and recovery can sometimes go outside of our safe zone. And we ask that you please respect if the decision to transfer is necessary and remember that it's just for the health of you and your baby. And I'm very proud to say that our C-section rate for our moms who transfer from the birth center in labor is less than 6%. So just because you're going to the hospital in labor doesn't automatically mean that you're going to need a C-section. Plenty of our moms go to the hospital and deliver their babies with or without an epidural and vaginally. And the last part of your blue packet are handouts on evidence-based birth. And then lastly, we do have a handout that we give you on diastasis recti and some different exercises that you can do after your baby is born to prevent the separation of your abdominal muscles. One thing we want you to know is that if we have to draw any blood when you're in labor, during your birth or after your birth, we do send it to the hospital across the street. So if you get a bill from North Austin Medical Center a few weeks after your birth, and you're wondering why, because you weren't a patient there, it was most likely because we had to draw some labs on you or your baby when you were at the birth center. Next are handouts for when you go home after your baby is born. Don't worry, we'll review these with you before you go home, but it is nice for you to look them over before you go into labor so that you have them in the back of your head. Also, we'll make sure to schedule your home visit that takes place between 24 and 36 hours after your baby is born. And we'll also schedule your three-day follow-up appointment that will take place at the birth center with the midwife. Thank you for attending the Getting Ready class. I hope this information has prepared you for your labor and your birth with us at Natural Beginning. And from all of us, I want to say thank you for allowing us to take care of your family during this time.